Greetings to all my friends and colleagues from a distant corner of the Manchester STI network. This is Ron Johnston checking in from Sydney, with apologies that I cannot be with you in person on this memorable occasion. To all of you gathered in the Sackville Street building, congratulations and a very happy birthday. I presume there's a giant cake lurking nearby with goodness knows what innovative enticements inside. And in the spirit of celebration, I'll mention that the Australian Centre of Innovation, which I established at the University of Sydney, passed its 25th year milestone last year. I arrived at the Department of Liberal Studies in Science in 1970, with the fates conspiring to send this Wagga Wagga boy back to the bleak north where I had studied for my chemistry PhD under Jack Lewis. LSS then occupied the hallowed rooms of Tom Kilburn and Alan Turing, where the first stored program computer in the world was developed. A fitting and occasionally spooky conjunction. And I still recall long discussions with Fred Jevons about the limitations of the department name. I always thought something more action-oriented was required. I worked with Michael Gibbons as a research fellow to examine the roles of science in innovation, leading to a still much cited publication research policy in 1974. Along the way, we challenged the crude market transaction dictum of Lord Rothschild's customer contractor basis for government purchase of knowledge to strictly limited effect. I was appointed a lecturer in 1972 in competition with the sadly departed Ken Green. And I was immediately pitched into the new master's course that Jarlath Renane was leading. There I encountered stunningly bright and committed students who had gone on, who have gone on to shape the STI discipline. Among them, Ben Martin and Ken Guy's names comes to mind. About this time, the European Commission was seeking to develop its STI policy capacity, which led to my joining a working party on European society and its interactions with science and technology, Section 12, all very EC speak. This was chaired by a professor, well, actually, no, a Viscount, Ilya Prigogine. And when he explained his theories of dissipative structures, and their role in thermodynamic systems far from equilibrium, at some length over a very good dinner, I pronounced to him that they were fundamentally flawed. A few years later he was awarded the Nobel Prize for it. I guess you don't always get it right. But more significantly for today's occasion, I recall bursting into Michael Gibbon's office in 1976, fresh back from Brussels with the assertion Sprue may have stitched up the UK science policy scene, but there is such a big future market in Europe, there's room for both of us. This was the genesis of PREST, the Programme of Policy Research in Engineering, Science and Technology, and I apologise, I was never very good with the acronyms, which led to the addition of a strong policy and engagement related focus to LSS's educational objectives. Prest rapidly grew into a powerhouse of influential STI policy analysis and advice, the precursor, precursor of MIOIR and its other important antecedents. Today in 2017, the challenge to effectively engage in and communicate sound STI policy analysis and advice is far greater than it was 50 years ago. It appears that governments at the political and public service level are far less likely to seek or trust the expert insights of those who've laboured long to develop sophisticated views of the complex processes of the STI ecosystem. And the community places high value on those new technologies that are so transformative, they quickly become invisible, combining gargantuan consumption with a paradoxical deep suspicion and hostility. And our world, in every sense, is less secure. So there's plenty to get on with in the next 50 years. So go boldly. <laughs>